the railway is a proven transportation method in many of the world's regions, connecting cities with both passenger and freight traffic. With intercity services commencing in 1830, I've come to the world's first railway of its kind, connecting the British cities of Liverpool and Manchester. At the beginning of the 19th century, England was amidst the Industrial Revolution that saw great economic success throughout its northwest region. With a rich local industry based in the development of cotton textiles, the town of Manchester was home to the majority of the region's factories, and the nearby centre of Liverpool, sited at the mouth of the River Mersey, providing a key dock for the transportation of both raw material and finished goods. Early freight connections between the two towns were made by water via private canals, with the existing road network mostly of poor quality. A new railway was soon put forward to better link the two urban centres, the plan of Joseph Sanders, a Liverpool corn merchant, and John Kennedy, the owner of Manchester's largest spinning mill. A proposed route would first be developed in 1822 by lawyer and surveyor William James. And after his bankruptcy, the task would be undertaken from 1824 by George Stevenson, a British civil and mechanical engineer who would later be known as the father of railways. Stevenson was a proponent of new locomotive technology to replace the animal-powered systems that had existed prior, and himself having built the first steam locomotive used on a public line at the Stockton and Darlington Railway, a route of which he would also survey. Stevenson's proposed intercity route between Liverpool and Manchester, however, would pass through the private lands of its opponents, and compounded by the lack of support by the canal operators, who would soon lose business, the plan would be first rejected by Parliament in 1825. A new engineering and surveyor team would be promptly appointed to make the necessary adjustments, and a bill for the railway's construction would be approved the following year. The Liverpool to Manchester railway could now become a reality. Importantly, the scheme needed to interface with the Liverpool docks, and to achieve this, the first two kilometres of track would be underground. The Wapping Tunnel would be the first of its kind to be bored under an urban environment. Designed by Stevenson, the freight connection opened up to the Cavendish Cutting before connecting to typical at-grade rail at nearby Edge Hill. A separate terminus for passenger traffic would be developed also, away from the docks at Liverpool Crown Street. By 1829, steam locomotives were still mostly untried, with cable haul systems remaining popular, and the committee split on the decision on which system to employ for the new network. To assist a selection, a competition was run at nearby Rainhill, where a steep section of track had been completed. Five locomotives would compete over a one mile long run, and it would be George Stevenson's rocket vehicle, the only one to complete the trial. Steam locomotion was gaining steam as the logical choice, and a contract was awarded to Stevenson to operate the service. With a cable hauled system required within the tunnel, commercial passenger services between Liverpool Crown Street and Manchester would be operated by steam engine. The 50 kilometre long network was composed of standard gauge double track for its entire length, another first for any railway. On the 15th of September 1830, the first intercity railway set off from here in Liverpool. Powered by the Northumbrian, the eighth iteration of Stevenson's earlier rocket design, the railway looked to provide regular service of speed and reliability. The inaugural voyage was in fact comprised of eight trains and included esteemed guests including the Duke of Wellington, the Prime Minister of the UK. The train would first pass through Edge Hill, a station since decommissioned and rebuilt nearby, before stopping at Broad Green, today the oldest operating station site in the world. The Northumbrian would stop for water mid-journey at Parkside near Newton Le Willows, which would provide an opportunity for its passengers to get out and have a break, an event which would ultimately mar the first journey in tragedy. With the rocket locomotive fast approaching on the other track, the Duke of Wellington was in discussion with William Huskisson, a member of parliament from Liverpool not noticing the train until too late, and the vehicle only a prototype and not fitted with brakes, Huskisson was struck by the passing engine. The travelling party would quickly convene and rush to one of the neighbouring properties for assistance. However, the owner was out at the opening of the new line, and without aid, Huskinson would later become one of the first reported casualties of the railway. The inaugural journey would, however, continue, finally arriving to the Manchester terminus. Locals were not supportive of the Duke's visit, however, with the Prime Minister returning to Liverpool without alighting. 
The Manchester terminus was originally proposed for the west side of the River Irwell, and with opposition from the river operator withdrawn at the last minute, the railway could extend into Manchester proper. The inaugural journey terminated here at the Manchester Liverpool Road Station, the world's oldest surviving terminus, with its tracks elevated at the rear of the station house. All up, at least 64 bridges and viaducts were developed for the original network, and all developed in masonry, with the exception of the final crossing over Water Street into Manchester Station, built instead of cast iron girders. Regular services reduced travel between Liverpool and Manchester to two hours, and was the first to be exclusively operated by steam-powered engines, although private carriages were also accepted onto the tracks. The network was also one of the first with a true signalling system, originally operated by police officers using hand signals, and later through the use of coloured flags, handbells and even explosives. The railway would see the first timetabled operations, with at least 10 minutes between each train, and would later become the first to carry the mail service. The system of the world's first intercity railway has otherwise been questioned. Whilst Liverpool and Manchester were both large populated centres, they were at the time however classified as towns. Manchester would gain city status not until 1853, the first in England for more than 300 years. Liverpool would gain this status also in 1880. And further, the overall network length of 50 kilometres, or just over 30 miles, is arguably not enough to qualify as a long-haul journey. Following the initial passenger services, freight transportation would commence three months later, with the canal operators initially lowering their prices to compete, and following the introduction of more powerful steam locomotives. The first services were limited to 16 miles per hour for passengers, and 8 miles per hour for freight, with drivers reprimanded for speeding, a necessity to protect damaging the tracks, of which were already being replaced before the end of the decade. By 1836, the Liverpool Crown Street station would be replaced also, with the world's first intercity railway station deemed too far out from the city centre. Later converted to a goods yard, with freight traffic remaining until 1972, the site is now home to the Crown Street Park, and complete with one of the original ventilation stacks for the now defunct tunnel that passes below. The new terminus would be opened at Liverpool Lime Street after four years of tunnelling from Edge Hill, opening in 1836 before works on the building had been completed. Today, Liverpool's primary railway station, Lime Street is the oldest operating mainline terminus in the world. The current buildings were expanded over the 19th century with an underground station opening in 1977. Manchester's terminus would also be replaced, with service redirected from 1844 to the new Manchester Victoria station at Hunts Bank. The old Manchester Liverpool Road station would similarly be converted to a goods yard before closing in 1975. In 1845, and following 15 years of service, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway ceased operations, amalgamated into the Grand Junction Railway, and a year later into the London and Northwestern Railway. The original path remains in operation today as the northern route between Liverpool and Manchester, alongside a southern route known as the Cheshire Lines. And after many decades of self-propelled vehicles, the railway was finally electrified in full in 2015. With electric and diesel systems gradually introduced around the world from the turn of the 20th century, the original 1830 Liverpool to Manchester Railway set the foundations for steam-powered technology and the shift to the machine-operated transport that is so common today.